Good morning, church. I'm glad that you are here worshiping with us today if you're a longtime member or visiting for the first time. Please remember to tell us you're here by noting your name and if you wish your contact information in the black registration pads in the pews. That goes for all of us, especially newcomers or visitors. Someone will pass the pad to you if it's not right in front of you. Feel free to take a look at it while you pass it along just in case you've forgotten the name of someone in your pew. It does happen. However, if you're visiting, I hope you will join us all for a coffee or other refreshment right after the service in the Great Hall, which is out that way to the right, up the ramp, follow the crowd and the smell of coffee. The coffee and the conversation are both complimentary. This would be a good time to check your phones and put them on mute. The only chimes we want to hear this morning are the ones that Doug will play as he closes the service. Our responsive call to worship is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 13. It's found at page 815, 815 in the United Methodist Hymnal. I will read the odd-numbered verses, and you will join me enthusiastically for the verses in bold type. And I will be reading both parts so we have the live stream. Anybody watching on live stream will be able to hear it. And yes, there is a page turn to get to the last seven verses. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare the Lord's glory among the nations, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of all the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before the Lord, in whose sanctuary are strength and beauty. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come into the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord has established the world, it shall never be moved. The Lord will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the wood sing for joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Now let us continue to prepare ourselves for worship by listening to Doug perform in Dulci Jubilo.
As we continue through this Advent season, we will light candles representing Jesus the Christ and symbolizing various aspects of the Incarnate One. On the first Sunday, we were reminded of the hope that we can find in his presence. Last Sunday, we lit the second candle of our Advent wreath. This candle reminds us of the peace that we find in our relationship with the Prince of Peace. Today, we light the third candle of our Advent wreath. This candle reminds us of the joy that we find in Christ and through Christ. When the Lord restored his people in Zion, they were like people who dreamed. Their mouths were filled with laughter and joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for us. Psalm 126, verse 1, 2. May the, two presence, may the true presence and hope and peace of Christ be with you and yours throughout the Advent season. And may the joy of his presence be part of your journey. Thank you, Wilson, and your mom and dad and sister. The Davis family, led by our newest acolyte, who takes his job serious. He keeps the pastor in line sometimes, don't you? It's good. Good morning, church. Good morning, choir, as part of the significant part of our church. Before we go any further, thanks. Thank you to the choir for your hours of practice and using those gifts and graces. Thank you for, to Charlie Van Basler for putting this together and the hours he has spent editing it and fixing it, going back and forth to Fred and Bob and so many others. Thank you, Doug, for rehearsing and working on this. It may have been music that's been done in the past, but it always needs to be dusted off. Thank you for joining us here in the sanctuary as well as virtually. It's good to give thanks. It's good to give thanks because it's a gift. Today is Music Sunday and the music is a gift from God. And this gift giving season, it's appropriate to set aside a Sunday where we just celebrate that gift. And I may reflect on that a bit later, but I want to share just a couple of gifts. One is last week you heard about Susie, the, the, um, the alias we're using for a young lady who I don't have the permission yet to use her name. I'll be meeting with her father, uh, her adopting father Tuesday. But as a gift, this congregation has the opportunity, to, there's greeting cards out in the narthex. Take a minute to just sign it and wish her a Merry Christmas, let her know she's being prayed for, goodwill, whatever, and then we will get those to her in a bundle. I can't share her address. And also, um, I got a gift just a few minutes ago. One of our own very special congregants seems to like the pastor, and during the Organ Voluntary came up and gave me a gift. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to open it after church, okay, Myron? Okay, thank you, Myron. I just, it's blessed when we see the relationship of church, isn't it? Lastly, as we're so busy giving thanks, let's pause to pray for the families and the victims of Mayfield, of the tornado in Mayfield, Kentucky. A town, as I understand, about 10,000, looks like it's been pretty well leveled. The death count is still um, being assessed. It looks like it's between 50 and 100. Everything is gone. Was news this morning, one of the county commissioners was saying, we used to have five pharmacies. Now there, we have none. They have to go, folks have to go to another community to get their medicine. We used to have banks, but we don't have any anymore. We don't have any grocery stores. We don't have gas stations. They need our prayers. Please pray for them. Pray for us, but also pray that the joy that we feel in the gift of Christ will be felt by those folks who are struggling with loss and devastation today. Will you join your hearts with me and we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. Yesterday is gone and tomorrow is but a hope, but today is the day that we have. So let us celebrate your presence with us as we give thanks for the day. 
for the fellowship of saints and the gift of music and how your holy word has called us to find you in the music and use music to praise you and worship you. We also, Lord, pray for those who are struggling during this holiday season with the loss of loved ones, the sickness and illnesses, the pandemic, the concern of economics for some families, and certainly the devastation of the victims of a tornado in Mayfield, Kentucky. Be present with them, Lord, and move amongst your church in a mighty way that your presence would be felt by the victims as well as the rescue workers and first responders. All this we ask as we invite your holy presence into this worship service today. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. Well. Newer members of our congregation may not be familiar with our great tradition of Music Sundays, one during Advent and another in Lent. Music is a very important part of the Wesley Methodist heritage, and we are blessed with the talent to put music front and center for this service. Trying to be a disciple of Christ is a two-sided coin. Jesus' messages are often challenging. Love your neighbor as yourself. What you do to the least, you do to me. But the other side of the coin is comfort. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. That's the overarching message from today's music. Much of it will be familiar. These are favorites of our choir, Doug and other musicians. Yes, you may hear something that makes you think about the Christmas story in a new way or inspire you anew, but that's not an assignment, okay? If you simply let the words and music flow through you, bring you some peace, or bring to mind fond memories, I say, Mission accomplished. The format of the service generally follows a well-worn path. I will introduce most pieces with a brief introduction, a reading of lyrics or scripture, and then we will enjoy the music. We begin with a selection the choir chose to share the excitement we all feel as we await Christmas and the coming of our Lord. As with most of the hymns and anthems for the Advent season, it's easy to see that we're not just awaiting the celebration of his first coming, the Nativity, but we're also anticipating his second coming. Our reading is adapted from an Advent meditation found at number 201 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Hear these words. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may rightly celebrate the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, we await Christ with joy. Alleluia.
would like to invite the children to come up, please. We're in the middle of Music Sunday this morning. Hi, Brittany. That's one of my favorite Christmas traditions at church, Music Sunday. We're so lucky. Hi, sweetie. Squishy, squishy. You got a piggy squishy. Stella loves those squishies. No, 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 it's it's actually a little dog. Oh, it's a doggy. Just looked like a piggy to me. (laughs) Music Sunday is one of my favorite Sundays. During the year, we have so many talented musicians here, don't we? The choir, Miss Tamara's directing, Mr. Dog's playing the piano and the organ. We've got all the goods going around here. I love it. Let's talk about another Christmas tradition. Let's see, what do I have in here? What is that? Candy cane. Candy cane. Do you get to have one? Maybe. So everywhere we look, we see candy canes during Christmas time. You might see it on a tree. You might see it candy-striped clothes. Look at Madeline's sleeves. She's got candy-striped clothes. You might see it on a ribbon or wrapping paper. Or it's just a delicious treat, right? At my house, we like to try all the different flavors. Do you guys do that? So I have a few different meanings of over the years, but I want to talk about what it looks like. A few different meanings. Do you see a candy cane? Doesn't it look tasty? What letter does that look like, you guys? What letter is that? J. That's a letter J. Your dad's name starts with a J. What else starts with a J? Joy. Perfect. That's our word of the day. What else? Julia does. I'm talking Christmas hey, season. My friend's name is Julia. How about Jesus, you guys? Yeah. How about Jesus? Um, it is his birthday. Jetpack. Oh, jetpack does start with J. You're right. <laughs> Good job, Emmy. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. So Jesus starts with the letter J. If we turn it this way, it looks like what? It looks like, not a letter, I'm thinking of something else, something somebody carries. What are you thinking, Ella? It does look like that. How about a shepherd's crook? Do you guys ever see a shepherd walk around with something like this? And a shepherd uses that, Declan. A shepherd uses that to make sure that the flock doesn't get lost. They kind of go like this, like I just did to Declan, and they pull them right in. They make sure they don't get lost. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the Lord is our shepherd, and he makes sure we don't wander or get lost. Right, Declan? And a candy cane is also white, and that's the color of purity. That's a fancy word for meaning like clean or free of contamination. And our Lord is pure, right? Yeah. There's also some red stripes on a candy cane. What do those stand for, do you think? Maybe the bloodshed for us. Jesus died for our sins, didn't he, Lawson? Yeah, isn't that so special, you guys? So there's lots of meanings, and I have it spelled out on this card for you. You can take home later. A lot of people think it's just a meaningless decoration, but maybe now when you see a fancy candy cane laying around, you'll think of those things that we talked about this morning. Okay, let's say a prayer. Are you ready? I want the rainbow stripe. All right, let's say a prayer, then you can have a rainbow stripe. You ready? All right, dear God, we thank you that Jesus is the good shepherd who keeps us from harm. Help us to remember that we find the true meaning of Christmas in him. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go eat candy canes. Parents, I'm going to keep them after for rehearsal till maybe 11. We'll get them upstairs. We'll get them upstairs. And remember, we have rehearsal next I Saturday eat at 10 a.m. I'm going to eat home. you, blood. Off you go. That's bizarre.
This little hymn, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, reminds us of the humble birth of our Savior. In a manger, with shepherds and animals as the only dignitaries to witness the event, it finishes by reminding all of us that Christ the Babe was born for you. Our reading is a familiar scripture. It's a passage from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Hear the word. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now, please stand as you are able, turn to number 229 in the United Methodist Hymnal, and let's join to sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. seated. Our next arrangement for a small handbell choir combines two beautiful songs of the season. Still, Still, Still is an Austrian carol that describes the sleeping Christ child and warns us to be still and let him sleep. As happens with so many carols, this one blends very well with another one. Away in a manger also gives us the image of the Christ child sleeping in a manger. To the shh message of still, 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 away in a manger adds a prayer. It asks Christ to return the favor of our silence as he sleeps by protecting us and lifting us to heaven to be with him. Hear now a verse from still, 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 then one from away in a manger. Still, still, still. He lies in slumber deep, while angel hosts from heaven come winging, sweetest songs of joy are singing. Still, still, still. He lies in slumber deep. 
Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. This morning is Music Sunday is really one of the serv worship services for the year that we can kind of show off our gifts that God has given us and provided for us. Through the readings, the organization of putting the service together, the voices, the, the handbells, and even Emily's herding and shepherding of the children. Who doesn't think she has her hands full as things are growing in that children's ministry? Eh? But it's, it's a time that we can recognize how very blessed we are as a church family and how very blessed we are as a family and children of God. And out of that thanksgiving, it's our privilege to return our finances, gifts, our tithes and offerings, and sometimes just a thank you to the Lord for all that God possesses us with. As we hear Sarah Sessions play Silent Night, take a moment to just give thanks to God for what God is doing in your life and in our lives. After the service on the way out, the offering plates will be available if you are um, so inclined. If you are a guest here, welcome. Please do not feel obligated to give money to the church or to God through this church, but give it to your home church. And if you're looking for a home church, might I recommend this one? Give thanks as we hear Sarah Sessions use the gifts that she has. But first, this introduction. <laughs> 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 
Many of us have heard the story of the humble beginnings of Silent Night as a quickly written Christmas Eve hymn in 1818. It was accompanied by a simple guitar because the organ was out of order that night. But its simple melody and beautifully descriptive words have become one of the most sung and recorded songs of all time. It invites us all to imagine ourselves right there on that silent night, before the angels herald, the rush of the shepherds, and the arrival of the three kings. Just us and the Christ child's family under the brilliance of the star that announced our Savior's birth. Here are the first and third verses of Silent Night. Silent Night. Holy Night. All is calm. All is bright round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly sleep. Silent night, holy night. Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Sarah?
Gracious and holy God, we do give you praise and thanks for all the gifts that you bestow upon us and cause us to be good and faithful stewards of. We rejoice in your goodness and your love. Use the gifts and the tithes and offerings that we, that we have returned to you to share that goodness and that love, to bring light and hope and peace to those who are hurting. Bless the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ through this church and bless those who will be impacted by it. All this we ask in the name of our Savior Jesus the Christ, whose birth we celebrate and whose life, whose life we attempt to live out. Amen and amen. Please be seated. The choir again wanted to share one of its favorite anthems over the years. The music emphasizes the excitement that the shepherds must have felt as they ran to Bethlehem to see the Christ child. The angels urge them on just as the piano drives the singers on. Let's see what God has done for us. Knowing what's waiting for us, how can we hold back? How could we not run? This reading comes from the cantata that includes Run, Shepherds, Run. Now the shepherds hurried down out of the hills and into the town, seeking the child of whom the angels had spoken. Hurry, they cried to one another, run quickly. We must see if what we have heard is true. They cried out as they ran down the path, out of the hills and into the narrow streets of town. A savior is born, a savior is born, they cried. We must find this child. So run, shepherds, run. end of that. <clears throat> in the Bleak Midwinter is a poem by the English poet Christina Rossetti, which is commonly sung as a Christmas carol. There are two common tunes used with these words. Each takes us deep into the text. Rossetti's poem takes us through many aspects of Christ's birth and, as many carols, depicts a northern European winter night rather than one in Bethlehem in the Middle East. 
That's an indication, I think, of how the Christmas story becomes something special to each of us and transcend, transcends time and place. The second stanza contrasts Christ's first and second coming. Again, we see the celebration of those two events brought together. The final stanza brings us to a more introspective view of the nativity. What would I have done there? Again, we join with the poet in offering Christ the best room we have in our hearts. Our reading for In the Bleak Midwinter is from the poem itself, verses 2 and 4. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. What can I give him poor that, as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what can I give him? Give him my heart. Doug?
Amen, amen. So, what better way to end an Advent Music Sunday than with rejoicing, as we will soon sing, News, News, Jesus Christ is Born Today. Let us look forward to Christmas and to our work of spreading that good news that Christ was born to save. Our reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, then verses 4 through 9. The word of the Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, please stand as you are able, turn to number 224 in the United Methodist Hymnal, and let us join to sing, Good Christian Friends, Rejoice! Music Sunday. Music is an important part of our worship experience every Sunday, especially during the Christmas season. And why is that? It might be that it's a gift from God. Christmas is the time that we are to remember and celebrate the birth of our Savior, where our salvation was found rooted in that gift of atonement of a baby born in a manger in Bethlehem who lived and walked the earth and finally suffered and died for our sins. Being buried in a borrowed tomb and resurrecting and ascending. And those are the statements of faith and that we build our faith upon. But it begins with a babe in Bethlehem. And over the years, music has become a significant and important part of 
the holiday experience. For you and I, let's try this. Maybe part of your Christmas experience, part of your feeling warm and closer to God is maybe the music from the Nutcracker or the Holiday Pops or a sacred hymn or maybe it's the remembering of carolers coming to your door. Maybe it's a children's choir singing a simple Christmas song. Or maybe it was some song you heard this morning. This morning as we heard Doug play the In Bleak Midwinter, it was take, took me back to a time a few years ago. My wife and I were up in northern Michigan at our cottage. And it was actually New Year's Eve. It wasn't Christmas, but be that as it may. It, it worked for the, for the bleak midwinter because after dinner we sat around in the fireplace and decided, let's go for a walk. We put our snowshoes on and walked into the, the woods outside of our cabin and as we were tromping along the, the crystal white of the snow looked almost blue. Kind of like those new LED headlights you see that are always in your rear view mirror blinding you on the highway. The snow was a, a whitish blue, a bluish white color and it was so still you swear you could hear a snowflake hit the ground. And somewhere as we schlepped along, my wife says, how are we going to know when it's midnight? Because it was New Year's Eve. And I said, don't worry. The locals will let us know. And soon the gunshots rang out. For it was about five minutes to midnight, maybe. But that, that song that we just heard Doug play took me back there. And doesn't music do that to us? It takes us back there. It conjures up memories. And that's important to remember, to revisit, to reconnect. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in, Coloss in Colossians, Let the word of Christ dwell in, your, in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Christmas is that perfect season where music helps us remember and reconnect with the gift of yesteryear and the promise of tomorrow. For me, our traditions are we have to listen to the Nutcracker Ballet. Whether our granddaughter is dancing it or not, it doesn't matter as much. Well, this year it might have meant more. But the music speaks to us. Our tradition in our house is we have to watch that movie White Christmas again. Pray for my wife because we've, we've watched enough that I think I can sing with Bing Crosby. What is it for you that the music of the season Harkens back the, the joy and the presence of God in your life. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, Paul writes. And in the process, we remember. Wesley was brilliant as far as sharing the theology and the gospel of Jesus Christ because he found songs that were common to humankind and he interjected the words of the divine. And it became common for us to sing our theology. It became common for us to remember our theology as we sang. And as we remember and sing, we celebrate a day such as Music Sunday. And so friends, as you shop and travel and visit and sit at home and have time with your family and you hear the holiday songs, listen for the presence of God in those. God's there. And as we sing hymns and spiritual songs, God will be with us. To the choir, to those who work so hard in putting this together, thank you for ministering to us this day in special ways, in ancient ways of music and remembering. Thank you to the, those who worked on this. Thank you to those who applauded 
and thank you for those who joined us virtually. May the holiday season be full of music, and may the melody of your heart ring with the love of God as a baby, as a man, and as a Savior. Would you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks for music, where our theology and your revealing to us is oftentimes found in the melody. And may the melody of our hearts be in tune with the love that you have for us and that we have for, for our fellow man. Thank you for the music Sunday and the remembering and the renewing and the rejoicing of Christians, of children, and of hope for tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Bob, I suspect we have some ministry opportunities. Yes, I think we do. So if you have a ministry opportunity to share, uh, please step forward here. Meanwhile, listen to these words. This is uh, Song 23 from the Book of Bob, and you won't find it in your pew racks anywhere. Yea, though I walk through the kitchen in the basement of the church, I will fear no aprons. For my friends are with me, their spatulas and baking sheets, they comfort me. I feel the warmth of the stovetop burners within my heart. Yes, the men not afraid of aprons are back. We will be preparing the Advent Fellowship Dinner this Wednesday, the 15th, at 5 p.m. Rob Stein has planned a terrific menu for adults and children. We have ministry opportunities for a small crew to help us prepare, serve, and clean up after the meal. So please contact Rob or me if you would like to help. Now, we do call ourselves the men not afraid of aprons, but we welcome people of all genders. If you simply plan on coming to dinner and study, please sign up in the, uh, on the pad that's in the narthex or drop us a note at office at gpumc.org just because we'd like to know how many we will be serving. Dinner is at five. Children are encouraged, of course. We will have separate study times for children and adults, and that runs from six until 6.45. Thank you very much. My name's Tamara Bobby. Today I'm here on behalf of the choir. Um, just a little impromptu ministry opportunity. We hope you enjoyed today. If you were sitting there and listening to the choir and thinking, well, I just really think it might be fun to sing with them, we'd love to have you. We have a lot of fun, and we'd love to invite men, women, all voices to come and join the choir. Um, we have a lot of fun. We're a really tight-knit group. We lo love each other. So if you sang in choir in high school or college, or you just like to sing, come and join us. No audition required. We're a volunteer group, and we'd love to have you. Our next rehearsal is on January 20th at 745. Thank you, Tim. This is a great day to make that pitch. <laughs> so if the holiday season is a challenge for you, you might consider attending our Blue Christmas service here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. That's 7 o'clock. You are not alone if you wonder how you will get through the holidays. Not everybody feels merry and bright this time of year, and the Blue Christmas service is intended to acknowledge that. The season can be difficult for many reasons. You may have lost a loved one. You may have gone through a big transition in your life. You may be experiencing health issues. You may simply be remembering happier times with friends and family. So whatever the reason, please know that this will be a service that will make space for that sadness. Everyone is welcome that night. And finally, uh, among the many things for which I'm grateful this year is the staff at this church. Christmas gives us the opportunity to make that gratitude a little more obvious and tangible by, by providing our staff members a Christmas bonus. Our Staff Parish Relations Committee provides a bonus to all staff members except Ray, consisting only of the contributions we all make just for this purpose. You can say, thank you, staff, by writing a check to the church with staff bonus in the memo field, SPRC will be accepting donations through the end of the year. 
If you have any questions, please see Ben Ford or anyone at SPRC. And that concludes the ministry opportunities for this week. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes, I, if you noticed Emily and those children, if you were here last Wednesday and saw what was going on in the great hall with the children in the pray ground and the joy of children who want to be at their church, and I think candidly some even drug their parents here quite unwillingly to use John Wesley's terms, we know that Emily's doing a great job. If you heard the music today, you know the choir, not paid, but darn good, but accompanied by Doug, appreciated. And if you got a bulletin today with not too many mistakes, that was because Chris Walker puts it together every week, runs man's the office, does so very much behind the scenes and it's appreciated. Please take time to appreciate them. They're underpaid and overworked and they need to be overappreciated. If, if you uh, plan on coming to hear the rest of Saul, uh, Bob 23 on Wednesday, there'll be teachings. We'll be looking at uh, Mary and the characteristics of Mary. The children will be taught by Emily, and I'll be doing the older children. If you're here last Wednesday, you probably asked for, uh, you'd like the scriptures that were referenced in that. There's a piece of paper out there, paper out there with the Old Testament prophecies regarding the Messiah's. So if you ask for one of those, they're out there. Speaking of last week, you heard about Susie, the name I'm giving as an alias to a young lady who's really struggling. I'll be meeting, I'm planning to meet with her adopting or guardian father, Bill is his name for real, on Tuesday, so that him and I can talk face to face with what opportunities and what options are available with the resources that we have at GPUMC. Then I can more clearly say, and maybe I'll even have permission to give her name. But in the meantime, there are cards out there if you'd like. Let's have a card shower. There are all kinds of Christmas cards out there. If you would take one and just make a quick note and leave it here or drop it off at the church or take it home and write a note and mail it back to the church, we'll be delivering those in a bundle to, to Susie. So this child who has so many struggles and challenges in life will know that somewhere there's some good and maybe that gives her some hope. Last but not least, who likes hockey? What kind of question is that? <laughs> Fooled you. January 13th, it's a Thursday, the Detroit Red Wings are hosting the Winnipeg Jets. And the Red Wing organization is doing something that they've copied from the Detroit Tigers, and that's having a family and faith night. I heard about it, I got invited because I still think I'm a pastor in the city of Detroit. That's good enough for me. Got invited down there, we spent an evening talking with them. And uh, I reserved a block of tickets that we can go to the 13th to a Red Wings game. We'll go as a church. There's some additional events ahead of the time of the game. At 6 o'clock, there's a concert. And there'll be some testimonies. And then we watch the Wings beat up on the Jets and, and cheer like true Christians. The tickets are $35. There's order forms out there. I don't need the money now, but I do need a head count or best guess. I've reserved a bunch of tickets, so if you think you're interested, pick up a brochure. They're kind of, they look a lot like the poinsettia orders, except you don't get to pick what colors. More questions, give me a, give me a call or give me a shout and we'll talk about it. But it's, it might be a nice night just for the church family to go out and have an evening together. As a side note, do you think ch children are important around here? To that end, if you have a child up through high school, who has a friend who is not a member here and would like to bring a friend, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pay for the friend's ticket. So little Joey or Julie can invite his or her friend to a, a night out to a hockey game, and the friend doesn't have to pay for the ticket. We'll pay for it. It just seems like the right thing to do, doesn't it? And when the tickets are gone, they're gone. So act fast. Or as the shepherds might run <laughs> with that. Could we have a benediction? Gracious and holy God, thank you for music. And as we go forth, Lord, may the melody of our hearts be filled with love. May your Holy Spirit be upon us, renewing and refreshing us. May our voices lift up that love and share it. May we be the ambassadors of grace. 
in, empowered by your spirit, set forth by the example of our Savior Jesus Christ, knowing that you're always with us now and forever. Amen and amen.